All right guys, so I'm working on my furnace on my upstairs of my house. My house is about 1360 square feet on the upstairs area. This furnace had, the intake had 3 8 8 inch flexible duct coming off of it, okay? And then I had 6 inch ducts going out to four rooms plus a bathroom. So I had five connections going out, three in, five out. If you do the math, that's 160 for the 8 times 3. Comes out to about, I think, 480, something like that. That's in. And then if you do the math on the 75 per every 6-inch duct times 5, what is that? Uh, 150, 300, 450, something like that. So it's it's about the same in and out, but it's way un undersized. This, this is a 70,000 BTU furnace. Uh, it's a, it's a 80% furnace uh, efficiency, but it's it's old. It's from that uh, I think 89, but um, yeah, it works. So what I'm going to be doing is redoing the duct because it's really old and the ducts are full of dust and stuff. But I'm also upping the size. I'm going from six inch outputs to eight inch flex duct. Instead of having three eights, I'm going to have two eights and one fourteen flex ducts. I already ran that flex duct right here into my hallway and two of the other ones will go to two bedrooms. You do the math, I have the eight inch ducts times, I think I'm gonna have five of them. Those are about 160 CFM uh, each. So the math should be about right. Another thing I was doing is these didn't have any tape on any of the seams, so I'm taping it all up and I'm also taping these up really well because when I took them off, they just came right off. The ducting was not very good. They actually used a, some of it was just duct tape, you know, the, the stuff that's not really for duct systems. Yeah, so this should tighten up the system. I don't want it to breathe air from the attic. The attic is not conditioned. It's unconditioned, so it's cold. And you don't want to be sucking that cold air into your intake and I'll show you a minute how it looks the furnace upstairs in the attic all right here's the furnace and you can see I ran this 14 inch duct and I wrapped the intake over there box I wrapped it with uh, insulation that's uh, about an R10 it's gonna have three other eight inches so it's gonna have quite a bit of uh, uh, air going into it but you can see this box over here is just just as small as that one it doesn't really go away from the handler it's really close so from what I read you want to have at least 24 inches away from the handler Twenty-four inch rule for pressure. That you should have no vents coming out, no outlets coming off twenty-four inches. So this box should really be way out here. So I might have to go and make another box this size and add it where it's at, and then push this one back two feet. And then I have another box I made for the very back to power um, to give air to the last two bedrooms. But yeah, this is, they were all six inch, so I'm going to eight inch from six. There was two six and two six on this side, and there was one at the end cap. You're not supposed to put them at the end cap because all the air will come out the end more than the others because it doesn't have that pressure. So I'm redoing this whole uh, plenium box out here because it's, you can see I already cut out, this is a 16 by eight for the new box that I built. Uh, another thing they said they recommend see these are professionals that recommend to leave a 18 on center between your takeoffs this is not even nine inches barely okay so it shouldn't you shouldn't have two so close I see it so many people doing this and it makes me think well why is everybody doing it wrong I don't understand it. All right, guys, here's my furnace plenium box. Originally, 
it was just this box here with all the runs coming out and it didn't follow the two foot rule i'm not an hvac tech but i did a lot of research and you want that pressure build up and you don't get that with just one box so i added a two foot box that i made made that out of a 48 by 36 piece of sheet metal this stuff's very thin from home depot like super thin uh, the older stuff's a lot thicker so you got to put some cross bends in it. I just used a straight edge metal one and just kind of hit it with my hand. So it's not perfect, but that'll keep it from uh, uh, contracting and expanding as the heater turns on and off. Uh, put some channels in here and I just screwed them down right now. I got to screw down this one here. And this is it, another box that I've made for to come on to goes on to this back side see there but I'll show you that in a little bit but see how I mask mastic taped all this up so it can't leak any air that's what you want to do I got to do all this as well I'll get this one on here and then I'll put some duck wrap insulation over that and I'll show you a video of it when it's all put together all right there's the two pieces um, I'm probably going to insulate these separately and then install one in the attic and then install the next one in the attic because it's going to be like over eight feet long to carry it up there okay i use some air duct sealant on all the joints here 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 on the sides and i waited for it to dry a couple hours so it's dry and then i'm going to put some uh, well i already started putting some foil tape over that so you don't have to use air duct sealant and tape but i'm just doing it because I'm um, just being extra cautious. I don't want any air leaks in my attic and it's, it's a, you know, unfinished space. All right, this is where I'm at. Got my two vents here, vent there. Closed off that one. It's a little too close to, but I'm, I don't really need it. So I just closed it off. This side, I got one for the bathroom here. One for the bedroom close this one off because i could have just used this one instead of this one but it's a little close there i wanted to get at least 18 inches on center away from that as hvac school says all right so this duct system now has has 24 inches off the heat exchange it's got 18 to 24 inches off center from the staggered position it's got 18 off of the transition from a lower transition, at least 18. And it's got 24 end cap. I mean, 24 inches from the end cap that's on here. And that's, that's a correct system. I got a damper here, just in case it gets too hot for the bathroom. So yeah, this is gonna work perfectly. But for now, I'm going to put some duct wrap. I think this is R6 by Masterflow. Um, it needs to be R12. It used to be R6, I think, but it needs to be R12. So i got to wrap this twice somehow. And guys, from my experience, from what I've researched, I bought like all the different tapes that you can buy. I bought the foil tape. I've bought in Flex. Uh, flex tape and I've bought a mastic tape the best tape I'd have to say is the mastic tape it actually has the mastic built in to the tape and that's what I would recommend if anyone's looking for the best tape for sealing your ducts and the best tape for using flex flex pipe would be flex fix they also make this by 3M, but that's what I'd recommend. It's more of a tape tape with aluminum. It's got like foil. Uh, it's not, I can't say it's foil, but it has metal inside, like uh, metal uh, lines in it. But it's not as, it's, it's easy to tear, but it's like flexible. So when you're going around this flex stuff, this plastic, it like adheres better to it because it can, the foil tape won't adhere that great because the foil, once you get a little 
crinkle in it from these wires, it wants to uh, wrinkle up like you can see on this side. So the flex fix is the best for your flex duct. And if you're doing metal ducting, metal pipes, you could either use the mastic tape, which is the best. For, it's called foil mastic sealant. Or you can use the, uh, this foil tape. But the foil tape will probably eventually go bad. And the mastic is more permanent. All right, got one layer of some fiberglass uh, duct insulation. And then I want to go over it with some really premium wool insulation, duct insulation. Two layers on that, that'll be R12. I could only get one layer of this, but that's okay. Um, it says you get 60 square feet, but I only counted 60 square feet times two feet would be 30 feet long. But I only counted about 20 feet, so that package is way off at Home Depot or whoever makes this product. This master flow duct wrap, six R6, 60 square feet is wrong. It's only about 20. Each time I wrap, it's about 50 inches long. So let's say uh, four feet. I wrapped it once upstairs, twice here. That's three. And I'm going to go two more. That's five. So five times four foot, that's only about 20 feet. Maybe about 20, 22 feet. So that's way off and it's two feet long. So two times 22 feet, that's 44 feet, 44 square. So that, that's kind of disappointing. But luckily I'm gonna have just enough to wrap this one up. But I wanted to do this one twice, but I can't. But show you a video how it looks when I'm done. All right, there it is all wrapped up with the insulation. This two layers on this side. And one layer of R6 on this side. I ran out of material, but that, that's good enough. Got this little edge here that I can flap over about four inches down. And then I'll just tape this seam here. But I'm going to build this up in the attic because it's going to be too long and too bulky to get up the stairs and stuff. Yeah. This should keep it nice and warm. And on this side, I got the little dampener going to the bathroom. I put open here, closed, just in case people forget. This is about 50% open. Right there. And I'll start off with it all the way open, because I know the bathroom does get pretty warm in there. And I don't have a, um, a close off. Uh, on the I don't have a dampener on the vent itself. It's one of those um, open throw ones that just blow all the air out. But yeah, I'm ready to get this installed now. All right, guys. I'm almost all done with this. Check it out. So what have I done? It cost me about 1200 bucks. And what did I do with that 1200 bucks? I got all new ducting. Went from six to eight. I got uh, two extra boxes made for the outputs of the system to put my takeoffs. I insulated everything. Uh, I'm getting all new registers. I also got all a new uh, intake with a 14 inch run. Before it was just three eighths. Now I got a 14 inch run, another eight here, and I got two more spots to put two more eight inch takeoffs for um, returns. But I'll do that because I'm still working on my master bedroom. I'll hook that up later, so I just capped it for now. So all I gotta do now is run this one last bathroom line here, this gray one going into here. And then I'm pretty much done for now. Left it a little long just in case I have lowered ceilings, just in case I wanna go in there and make it a little higher. I have a little bit more room to uh, run that line if I need to relocate any of those lines. I just capped this one off right now. I took some of my old duct and I cleaned it out, washed it off. Because I blew it out and it still was dirty. So I actually had to go in there with a sponge and clean the sides under the sink. 
put some tape on the ends, smash it at the ends, just put a wire for now. It's just temporary. And I got another takeoff down there on the return. That's going to go to this master bedroom over here. Uh, last month I spent about a thousand bucks on electrical, doing electrical work for the room. And it's, everything's getting expensive, guys. It's just to work on your home is just getting really, really expensive. But some of these, some of these things need to get done. Like uh, this is a must, especially when you're in a cold, cold climate like I am. I think I'm in uh, zone five or four or something like that. And you can see that cap. It's, I capped the six-inch cap. It's right there. So I. If I ever had to run another line, I could just run it right there or add one a little farther, like I did on this side. And this one has a cap also right here covered up. I could always use that if I had to as well. I think I need one more one more run, and that's just to go to my stairway area. But yeah, that's it for now. Totally looks a lot it looks a lot different now that I <laughs> Added a whole nother, what, about eight feet or six feet to it. Yeah, originally it was just this one box here and everything shot out of it. One at the end, two on the sides. And yeah, after doing a lot of research, going to hvacschool.com and learning the proper way to do it, we'll see if this improves the, um, the feeling of the rooms because before it was just too stuffy. And not only that, the all these duck lines were full of dust so we'd wake up with sore throats and uh, I think these ducks were from 1989 or 88 that's how old the furnace is but the furnace is still good so if it ever does go bad everything's ready though for a new system I could just swap out the, the furnace and be good to go but um yeah let me go and finish this one line and yeah test the system out All right, heater is now working. Just started it up. Everything seems to be working fine, thank God. Because I've never done this before. It's my first time doing any of this type of duct work. And, uh, glad, I'm happy it's, it's all done. We can stay nice and warm this winter. If, you, if I would have took a video before, <laughs> it was terrible. All this duct was just ripped up. I think raccoons got up here and ate up all the insulation or you know they got into it I had a raccoon in this room that uh, he got in through the soffits but I fixed the soffit so he can't get in no more and actually some raccoons even broke through the roof and I had to fix that too where the uh, inbox gutters were all right I don't hear any leaks or anything My little, my little uh, plug is working pretty good. No air is leaking out of it, so that's good. That will be for my master bedroom later. Yeah, everything's working good. Thank you, God. All right, project done. Next, I just have to get some new grills and put filters on every grill. Probably going to have two grills for now, but I'm actually going to have one grill in every bedroom. So I'm going to have a total of four grills. In the bedrooms and one girl in the hallway and they're all gonna have filters and I'll probably just take the filter out of this furnace because it doesn't really have one which is really weird so the way I have it is I have to open up here and then just kind of lay a, a filter in there because there's no place to slide when they never added a, a box for it oh yeah it's real hot now so this is a 75,000 BTU. I don't know what that is because it's 80%. It's probably like 60,000 output BTU. But that's plenty for a 1360 square foot upstairs. All right, guys, that's it for this video.